All right, 2018 is coming to a close. Can you believe it? So we thought, what better time than to highlight a few of the media lowlights from the past year. And our friends at Gravian helped us out here, too. My old producer, Tom Elliott, does a great job there. Here with me now to take us through the tape, former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee, host of Media Buzz, also right here on Fox News, Howie Kurtz. All right, gents, I want to first start with the media's once warm embrace of a man who is now not on the top of the invite list. Let's watch. Stormy Daniels' lawyer, uh, Michael Avenatti, joins us uh, live now. It's joining me now is Stormy Daniels' attorney, Michael Avenatti. Michael Avenatti is with us now. Michael Avenatti joins us now. And joining me now from Los Angeles is Michael Avenatti. Oh, we want more of the spooning comments that they made toward Avenatti. How yeah, he was hard to book. Yeah, now he was. Well, he was uh, the bell of the ball, though, until he wasn't. So, so should the media uh, have seen this coming with the meltdown of Avenatti? The degree to which CNN and MSNBC put this guy on sometimes several times a day to peddle his unsubstantiated claims and develop his presidential delusions was really something. But the worst by far was putting on Avenatti to make the claims of Julie Swetnick to vouch for this woman who accused Brett Kavanaugh of being a bunch of gang That's what we want to see. That, that's what that's the yeah. thing I want to see. I want to that see that We'll tell us more yeah. about so That's what we the introduction. We want to see that it's like, oh, really? Tell us more about yeah. all this unsubstantiated garbage. That should go down as one of the biggest black eyes of this media over the last 12 months. Without Disgusting. Um, and uh, let, let, we have, are we going to go to the next one now? All right. Well, Huck wants to describe this as well. Well, uh, Governor... I think Michael Avenatti is just one of those figures who will occasionally pop up on, like, if they have a, you know, a celebrity Hollywood squares, maybe, you know, he'll, he'll be the right, the lower right square or something. But I don't, I don't see Avenatti having, playing much of a uh, role in public life in the future. Well, I think his uh, his history is up like a rocket, down like a rock, back under the rock from which he crawled. That's the end of the story for Michael Avenatti, I'm pretty sure. All right, number two on our list involves some actual dumpster diving as journalists attempt to find some dirt, literally, tying President Trump to Russia. Just quickly, you look through the trash there. What, what did you find? Uh, yes, we did. Well, we, we came here expecting this office to be, to be empty. Um, uh, but in fact, all day here, we've been here throughout the course of the day, people have been going in and out. We went to the trash can to see what we could find because we saw people dumping rubbish there. New computers, new computers are being delivered here and they're throwing away the rubbish. Well, if somehow the accent makes it all the more yeah, interesting, right. doesn't it? Here I am with the rubbish. Let's inspect the rubbish. Uh, not that big a deal, <laughs> but it kind of smells. Well, yeah, literally and figuratively. <laughs> but, Governor, again, this does... It just tells you how low they can go. I mean, it, it, going through garbage now, I mean, I guess you can do that, but for what? What did they get? I thought they, were, uh, I thought they were doing a tour of their newsroom because that's what we typically see with uh, a lot of these networks. I mean, anything, anything, and that does show uh, that if you're willing to go through people's trash hoping to get something negative on uh, conservatives, you're, you're pretty desperate. And this is a media that's pretty desperate. There's no uh, doubt about it. That Howie, was hilarious. What, what's the, what's the uh, rating for the media now? Like, is there approval rating? It usually hovers around 20% or something. Um, Whether people respect them or. Maybe up to 30, but basically. Oh, it's up to 30 now. Wow. That's actually pretty good. No. How? I don't see that. This is not my Gov. rating. I'm telling Howie. you how it shows up in yeah, the. What, yeah, Gov, what do you. you how, hey, now. Governor, we got to check the. <laughs> check the. Do my Google search, Raymond Fox. What is it really 30%? I, I, I just got to tell you. Howie, the Sir. flu is more popular than the media right now. Well, it is on the downward <laughs> spiral, and some of these examples show why people don't trust the press. Huh. All right, let's move on yes. to number three, where some CNN hosts did their best to test the limits of the FCC. It's the craziest I ever heard. Whole countries. Whole country. Whole. These countries are holes. I couldn't give a about them. I've definitely been. Slopers and slant eyes called you an a in a wet back. A they didn't say the n word. I can't tell me you're offended when I say. Yeah, that's a lot. Of Did you uh, wear out the beeper there? I don't even know how you do those edits on that stuff, uh, Governor. Let's start with you. Um, the swear fest. I mean, I guess it's people are more authentic, living their truth. I love that phrase. <laughs> We're living our truth by. I didn't like going. Our previous yeah. guest, who was a war hero and triple amputee, I mean, I adore him. I don't like it when people use 
P-I-S-S-E-D -S -S -E on air. I know that sounds like old-fashioned, but I know we all swear. I mean, maybe not Governor Bukaki, we all swear, but we kind of want to not on TV as much if we can possibly not. Well, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, they, they quit serving sandwiches in the CNN cafeteria, and now they just sell soap uh, for the people to eat that because they've gotten so potty mouthed <laughs> over there. So it's a oh, steady what diet. Rules? What are the rules? Every I'm brand in, of soap. Yeah. In one <laughs> interview, CNN anchor Fareed Zakaria called Trump a BS -er, using the full word, four different times. It just goes to show that when you're talking about Donald Trump, the standards go out the window. There's a complete double standard. You can get down and dirty and curse all you want because somehow that's okay. I mean, there, we, we, have, the audience yeah, we have anchors on, on other networks just saying oh, he's, he's a racist, he's a racist. I mean, just like he's a racist, he's a liar, he's a no, racist, he's, he's a liar. He's a blanking racist. Right, he's a blanking <laughs> racist. But, I mean, it's just, it, it shows you, both uh, Governor and, and Howie, it shows you and I hate the phrase Trump derangement syndrome has become such a cliche, but the, the, it's something is burrowed deep into the psyche of people that they're not even able to have friendships with people with whom they disagree, the tolerance set. And this, you see this in media figures, people who I've been friends with in other media outlets for years, not all of them, but I used to like Don Lemon. Don Lemon used to come on my radio show. Mm -hmm. We were joking uh, earlier that I used to have people like Frank Rich on my radio, John Kerry, mm -hmm. like we can disagree, but now they're so, uh, they're just so, it's burrowed in anger and resentment and upsetment. And, uh, you can't even fraternize. You can't even, you right. can't even have a conversation. Like, you're a horrible, awful, rotten person if you ever said anything nice about Donald Trump. And it's, and it's oozing out of their pores, which is very strange. All right, the last one on our list is someone I just mentioned, CNN's Don Lemon, describing the biggest terror threat facing our country right now. We have to stop demonizing people and realize the biggest terror threat in this country is white men, most of them radicalized right up to the right. And we have to start doing something about them. There is no travel ban on them. There is no ban on, you know, they have the Muslim ban. There is no white guy ban. So what do we do about that? Uh, Governor Huckabee, you yeah, are what do we do? one of those aforementioned white men. So. Yeah, you know, I'm guilty as charged. I am an American white man, and I don't know what Don Lemon's going to do. What is he going to do to deport me? To where? I'm an American-born citizen. What is he going to do? Arrest me? For what? I think differently than him. This is America. This is the, really the, the height of it. But the, I got to tell you, Laura, it's not just what he says. It's that tone where he's attempting so diligently to sound authoritative that I found beyond amusing. And these guys who sit and they uh, pontificate night after night with such a tone of seriousness as if they are personally oh, saving pained. this great republic. Oh, yeah, but they're I'm very pained. I'm, I'm pained to have to say this. Yes. I regret having to, having to say yeah. this. All right, How, Howie, before we go, remember this ad from CNN. This is a whole bunch of bananas. Somewhere buried within it is an apple. Some people might try to tell you that there's no point in looking for it. But there's only one way to know what's been covered up. You start digging. Move over James Earl Jones. I like James Earl Jones better. This is CNN. This is CNN. Don't slip on the banana peel. It's kind of a fruitcake ad. Yeah. You know, but there is a certain self-righteousness that has creeped into a lot of the media self-promotion. Washington Post, democracy, democracy dies, dies in, in the darkness. darkness. Right. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Somehow yeah. democracy wasn't in danger, you know, yeah, yeah. Barack Obama Thank was you, president. Jeff Bezos. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe small business might die in the yeah. face of I, Amazon. I mean, I'm, but... all for, I'm all for self-promotion, but yeah. like, let's keep it real. Well, uh, still to come, both of you, thank you so much.